Hey guys, Tom from Metal Loud, and it's time for another one year later review. This time we're going to be taking a look at 2014 Skindred album, Kill the Power. We are the sickness, we are the ill, we are the ones that you shoot to keep. So Skindred are kind of a band that many people often overlook. They kind of came out during that whole new metal scene during the late 90s and early 2000s. Uh, they hit big with their, their song Babylon. It's really kind of... Um, took dub, uh, not really dubstep, but dub and metal and kind of fused it together. And that was at the time a lot of bands were infusing kind of like hip hop into their, their metal sound as well. And I feel like they kind of got lost amongst that crowd and people kind of just lumped them in with, you know, that scene at that time. But Skidrid actually one of those bands that kind of really rose above um, the, the new metal scene. They weren't really quite as cheesy or as simple as those other bands were. They were also one of the few bands to really incorporate kind of uh, political statements into their music as well well and that's why I kind of say that they, they weren't quite as simple as those other bands. Their songs weren't simply just about anger or angst or you know just fighting the power uh, and things like that. They they really were about uh, you know they were politically charged in nature much like bands like uh, Rage Against the Machine or biggest comparison I can draw especially today would be to Enter Shikari. Now, they're not quite as core as Enter Shikari are. They kind of take a little more of a, a metal approach and definitely more of a dub kind of reggae fuse into it versus Enter Shikari, which kind of incorporate a lot of different electronic work into their metal core sound. So this album, Kill the Power, is the latest one that we get from Skindred, and it's probably my favorite album from them. I've, I've kind of kept up uh, over the years with them. I went, you know, went forget about them, go back, forget about them, realize they have a new album, go back. And this one really kind of caught me off guard. It, it is an extremely well done album. I liked it when it came out a year ago, and I still like it today. They really have mastered the craft of mixing dub which i'm i'm a huge fan of dub and actual dubstep it's it's kind of one of my uh i would say guilty pleasure genres and even reggae to a degree which they they blend with metal which is obviously another one of my favorite genres and they do it so masterfully which is, is something that very few bands can do which is why the whole new metal scene has dropped out and this album really has some perfect examples of that blending of those styles and genres. I mean, you have songs like Worlds on Fire that even throw in some reggaeton beats in there mixed in with the metal as well. Kind of starts out slow. Um, I don't know what measure it is. I'm not a music major, so unfortunately I can't talk about the technical aspects of it. But it's that slower uh, dub and it when the beat drops which you know is something we all expect from dubstep it, it hits really hard with this this guitar riff and it's just such a perfect balance of all these genres that they do so well and it, it's something that appeals to a lot of people if you're if you are somebody who liked that kind of new metal blend of hip-hop and rap and and metal and if you're somebody who listens to metal because you like the energy and the often the you know breakdowns things like that in you know if you are a kid who likes dubstep and you know you listen for the drops or this the the crazy beats that they have going on this is something that's probably going to appeal to you it's a, it's a very well done crossover and as i mentioned lyrically they're a, a fairly progressive band not willing to you know hold any punches here with their politics going on and a lot of their their lyricism is, is deeper than you'd get from the average band that you'd kind of expect to try to cross over the genres they they definitely do a very good job at it and there there's still some songs on here that do fall a little bit flat uh i mean my hatred for a few of these songs have actually worsened over the last year the song we live is kind of just a, a cheesy ballady kind of song that just falls flat the song saturday kind of almost sounds uh entrenched in pop punk but it just feels so cheesy as one of those, hey, let's go party songs. And it, it really feels out of place with the rest of the album, especially. They do have uh, some softer songs on here, particularly the ending track actually is a song that's grown on me over time. I didn't really like it the first couple times I listened to it. The song is called More Fire, and it starts off kind of acoustic. Um, 
and it's just it's a catchy song um like i said i didn't really like it the first time i listened to it, it was a little too slow i kind of lumped it in with the songs like we live and saturday um but over over time it really has grown to me the more i listen to it the more i do like the song so overall after uh, a year of listening to this album i have to say i keep going back to this album uh, i'll put it aside a lot especially when new music comes out but i i will often listen to it um it's not really so much played in my car anymore occasionally i'll throw a song or two on my uh my car to listen to but Generally speaking, I listen to this at home, but I do keep going back to it. I, I think this is representative of Skindred. I, I really think it's an underrated album, as I feel they are an underrated band.